First of all, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to do is pick up a newspaper. I can't imagine Britain without newspapers. I think we've got the best national newspaper industry in the world by miles. I mean, one of the great things about living in Britain is the variety um, of the newspapers. I think I started reading newspapers when I was, I don't know, maybe 10? That's my guess. I should probably have been early. I, I'd like to say three. So I seem like a prodigy. I started to read newspapers very, very young. Um, there was always newspapers in the house. My mum and dad taught me to read and write before I went to primary school. So there was always papers around, books around, magazines around. It, you know, for me, it is literally like a, like a sort of portal that takes you wherever you want to go to whatever you're interested in and, and, and makes you a sort of an interactive citizen. I mean, if we're talking about sort of great British export stories, um, the British media is one of the, you know, the, the biggest success of the last 10 years. What distinguishes us from other media is, is the immediacy. Every morning when I get up, I start with a blank canvas with my colleagues. We've got 30 or 40 pages, if we're lucky, to fill with ideas. I still get on the tube every morning and see people reading the paper with a smile on their face and that encourages me every day. If I am walking past on a Saturday, see I'm out shopping and somebody is sitting reading my page. There's ju you, you just can't explain how brilliant that is. The trick is, of course, coming up with the right mix of things that are serious, things that are funny, things that are informative, things that make people drop their toast into their laps. But the best thing of all is when a reporter stands in my doorway and says, Chris, I've got a really great story. For me, the best qualities of a newspaper and the things that I really value and appreciate are the, the originality, the, 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 the people who find stories that, that aren't in the headlines. Newspapers still have fantastic influence. It's intergenerational, you know, parents perhaps read it, teenagers read it, the boss reads it, his PA reads it. Over the years, so many of the big stories that have been broken have, have come to us via newspapers. It's hard to think of any that haven't come, uh, you know, via newspapers. Without newspapers, there is no news. Can you imagine breakfast TV without newspapers? If I turn the TV on in the morning, every show will be discussing a story in the sun that day. If I listen to the radio in the morning, we've set the agenda on certain things. It's a common criticism by people who come to this country that they are staggered at the variety and richness of the language and the energy and the variety of British newspapers. Every day, more than 20 million people read newspapers, national newspapers. They have huge reach, and each one has an appeal to a different readership. I tend to sort of read as many as I can. Um, I start off with The Sun, and then The Independents, and then I read all the rest of the Red Tops, and then work my way up, <laughs> slowly but surely, to the Financial Times. They're read by millions and millions of people, both in print and online. Uh, and if you're doing your job properly, you're writing about things that really matter. Where else in, in, in a 30 minute, 40 minute read can you, can you have football, can you have Coronation Street, can you have politics, can you have campaigns about drugs or knives or equal pay? For opinions, for elaboration, for theories, for explanation, all of that from newspapers. We don't just present facts, we present opinions and we campaign on those opinions and we pursue what we think are the interests of our readers. I don't think any other media really connects with a, a readership or an audience in the same way that newspapers do. It's, it's the greatest insight into the lives of the people of this country. What I'm most proud of, and I think what sustains a lot of people in my newspaper, is that we actually think we're improving the world. Whenever we see uh, evidence of wrongdoing or corruption uh, or confusion, we like to explore it. We're like a, like a dog with a bone on these stories, and we keep going at them until we get to the truth. Obviously, there's the impact of the internet on our business. There's a lot of talk about the death of newspapers, but in fact, newspapers are merely evolving. At the Mail on Sunday, we have, you know, with Mail Online, this incredible additional forum of um, 100 million people looking at our website, uh, on, in addition to the 5 million who read the paper every Sunday. It gets bigger all the time. Last month we posted our record month for online readers. We had 60 million unique viewers came and looked at the Telegraph website. Now we can communicate with people across the world and they can reply in seconds. Social journalism, open journalism is, is going to lead to better, better journalism. Social media and social networking allows us to have a far more fluid relationship with our readers. 
I, I think our, our relationship with our readers is very good because we understand them. And that's helped, very much helped by social media. Now, the moment you send the send button on a story, uh, people are responding. Columnists are constantly engaging with, with readers, debating with them, uh, answering emails, messages, blogs. You get feedback on what you've written on the internet and sometimes that's very nice. You get nice comments on Twitter or constructive criticism on Twitter. You also get a lot of abuse. <laughs> the, the Guardian website, which is where my Observer column goes up, is just a free-for-all of hate sometimes. I wake up every single morning to uh, around about 100 tweets talking about what I've written that day, criticising me, suggesting I might have it wrong, saying that's brilliant, you're absolutely right. One of the extraordinary things about newspapers is that they are unique as a magnet for concentration of the reader. I look at Sky News, I zap between news channels, and then when I get in the car, the first thing I do is I grab the papers, because there is just something, for me, um, I don't know, for me, it's, it, it feels more real than anything else. You know, it feels more real than these other sources. There is rolling news all the time, Mad Online, Sky Sports News. There's so much information in the world nowadays. Uh, that's not the that's not the world's problem. Uh, it's it's finding out what can be relied on and trusted. I will look on Twitter, because oftentimes you get the news first on Twitter, but then you have to source it because you can't really trust it always. My view is that p that papers will exist in ten years and in twenty years. There's something very comforting about newspapers. I think that the fact that there's one every day, the fact that it's a, a, a quite an inviting object. It's a very civilised way to look at news off a, off a piece of paper. A lot of our readers will read the tablet during the week and then the papers on Saturday and Sunday. And we're entirely comfortable with that. I mean, as long as they're reading the words and looking at the pictures and looking at the ads, and we think the tablet's a great medium for advertising, that uh, they can become interactive. Uh, and this is an incredibly exciting development. I think that there is absolutely a future for the printed product, but of course, we need to diversify. The vast, vast international uh, spread of mobile devices, um, if, if we don't get, if we don't seize that, then, uh, then we're really missing something. Until the iPad came along, we were all struggling with how we could display what we do in print on the, on, on the internet. The multimedia platforms that are available to us now means that I can take our fantastic content and, and a, a, attract a new audience because we've got a younger audience online, a younger audience on mobile and, and hopefully a younger audience with our e-edition as well. I do see a successful digital future and a slow transition that print coexists with digital for many years. The newspapers are having a difficult time. We are in decline, um, the numbers say so, but the numbers are still high, they're still strong. Newspapers are merely evolving. The fact is that news brands like The Telegraph uh, remain strong, if anything are stronger now than they were 50 years ago because they reach a far wider audience. They reach an amazing audience across the UK and globally. I think it would be an absolute tragedy if newspapers were to die out in their present form. Of course, we've all got to move forward. But I honestly think that, you know, online versions of newspapers and actual print newspapers can exist very happily together and can complement one another. And that's the way I would like to see the future. I think it would be such a loss to us not to have the printed word. What newspapers provide, people will always want and therefore in the long run you'll be fine. People will be willing to pay for what they want and there will be news gathering organisations and interesting columnists and investigative reporting. In the long term all of that is safe because humankind needs it. The only poll I'm interested in is the one that shows 2.3 million people every single day putting their hand in their pocket and buying what we put a lot of love and a lot of effort into producing. When the Evening Standard went free, it created a new model for newspapers and a new economic model that everyone's found very, very exciting. And that is that if you produce something of quality that people like very much, um, and therefore there's this goodwill, um, that it's like a gift rather than something free. So many people say that newspapers can't be trusted. Concentrate on the good things that papers do. And just, I mean, let's, let's not forget, I mean, hacking, hacking was exposed by other newspapers. For me, 
uh, the phone hacking was, a, was an important story for the press to do. Uh, and when Leveson met, he said actually it was, a, it was a symbol of the great strength of the British press. I'm incredibly proud of the work we did on MPs' expenses. I'm incredibly proud of the investigations work we have done. But it feels like we're just beginning to emerge from a, a difficult time and we're back on the front foot of it. And the most encouraging thing is that during that time we've got a seven-day operation now and probably the most difficult time for newspapers. I think the relationship between the commercial side and the newspapers has changed. I, I think yeah. in the past um, newspapers have been behind on understanding a commercial environment um, and a bit haughty actually towards advertising. In terms of how advertising works in the paper, we, we have to have a more creative approach. Well, it used to be really simple. You used to have a newspaper and um, there was advertising and there was cover price and th that was all you had to think about and if you've got those more or less in right balance, um, it, it was fine. Uh, one of the unsettling things but also the big opportunity at the moment is that all that is up for grabs and you've got um, entirely an entirely new commercial model which is there to be invented. I think as time has moved on an editor has to have a far more commercial awareness. I think our relationship with advertisers has got much better over the years. We're much more open to innovations in advertising. Uh, we understand that advertising has to reach out to other people, people they haven't reached before. I, I used to just look through paper and just see the just see the stories in the way that commerce only ever looked at the advertising. Now I look at both, you know, and I see them um, actually in a in rather harmonious way. Well, you know, I actually really uh, try my best and try really hard to spend as much time as possible with the commercial guys because they can be a huge help to me. In, in the Olympics we had great relationships with the advertisers where, where we were able to say we are doing a feature on, for example, Jessica Ennis and therefore it would not be, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a question of, of, uh, of damaging our integrity for an advert about Jessica Ennis to run alongside it. Quite simple. I do remember when we had our first page three as an advert and that seemed a you know, tremendous sort of step out of line and it was of a car, a rather beautiful car, and watching people on the tube just admiring it, lingering on the space three. <laughs> and uh, you know, that was a rather sort of seminal moment of thinking actually if advertising looks great, you know, that's good for us. Increasingly, brands are looking for interested, engaged consumers who can pick up on what they have to sell and spread the word. The fact is that those kind of engaged audiences that advertisers are looking for can be found most clearly among newspaper readers. News organisations can help uh, commercial organisations and their marketing directors and, and actually the agencies. Uh, we can all help each other because we, we, we know that this is going to be the future uh, and in a sense we're all on the same journey. <laughs>